Hi everybody, it's Miss Haas. Oh, upside down, here I am uh, in the classroom and I'm bringing you another activity for the week of December 7th. This week is exciting because I'm also doing small groups with second grade reading and getting in the, the spirit of the holidays and thinking about winter break. We've also had some snow, so I wanna draw something really fun in the snow for you buddies. This video is for first and second grade and we are going to take our time drawing some footprints in the snow. This is a great introduction to overlapping space and making things in the distance look smaller and that makes them look farther away. So these are our basic steps that we're going to be doing and then at the end I will leave this up so if you need to pause the screen you can if you want to try again if it doesn't turn out right the first time or uh, if you want to show someone else in your family how to draw this with you uh, then I will leave that up at the end but let's go ahead and get started you need something to draw with and a piece of paper doesn't have to be plain white paper you can always draw a notebook paper if you color over it it looks pretty good here are some examples from previous students here's a really cute one this one has um I think he said these were bear tracks and uh, this was a student called Israel and Israel decided to give me his paper when he was done I really like Israel's big stars and snowflakes Israel chose to decorate his trees but that's absolutely not a requirement uh, here's one from a student uh, and she had these really cool uh, boot tracks I think she said those were Santa tracks but they could just as easily be farmers. This is a nice one with a colorful sunset. Uh, you can see that this kiddo erased and moved the tracks so that it looked like there was a continuing uh, journey onto the other hill and that's so fun. Uh, and this one is mine. I decided to get fancy and add shadows. That's something you can think about. And we are ready. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is draw an overlapping hill. So I'm going to draw one hill that goes all the way to the edge of the page and then I'm going to draw a smaller one that's farther away. Remember you can pause anytime you need to and if it's feeling stressful all of the art activities are totally optional. So here we go. I'm going to make a line from one side of my page to the other and it's going to slope down. I don't know if I want my hill to be super steep but I definitely want to have one big hill on this side and then I'm gonna start from behind the hill and make another one on the other side so now I have overlapping space this hill blocks my view of the other one so I only see it where it can show from behind and this one's gonna be farther away and this one's gonna be closer now I'm gonna draw some trees on my closer hill I'm gonna draw big trees on my far away hill I'm gonna draw smaller trees I'm gonna do some very simple trees your trees can be a lot more elaborate than this I'm just gonna do some uh, like shaggy trees over here but your trees could just be a triangle too and then you could go back and add some shaggy lines for texture you could, you are welcome to draw an apple tree I was just sort of thinking about evergreen trees so that I can color them in later uh, and I'm gonna put another one back here too another tree shaggy little tree and this will look so much nicer colored in don't worry I know it looks kind of hairy and weird right now but once it's colored in it's gonna look great and I can make my trunk a little bigger too so it doesn't look like it's you know sick <laughs> or wilting okay over here the far away hill these trees are gonna be smaller much smaller so that they look farther away they're also gonna be less detailed because it's harder to pick out the needles on trees that are farther away it's time to think about footprints because that's the whole point of this lesson they're gonna be big at the bottom of the page they're gonna be small at the top of the page we're gonna do some footprints you can do animal tracks hoof prints human prints maybe um, 
some a separate set of tracks for where someone has been sledding and there's some sled tracks totally up to you use your imagination I'm gonna keep it simple I'm just gonna draw some circles that get smaller as they get farther away or well I guess it's more like an oval isn't it and then I would color those in gray or light blue because shadows on snow sometimes look blue or purple and I try to make them a little smaller at the top of the page. On the far away hill, same thing, but they're going to be shrinking, 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 shrinking as they get farther away. And I'm going to start them just like I started on the big hill at the bottom of the page. I'm going to start the little hill at the bottom of the little hill where it meets the big hill. So I'm going to put some over here. And they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as they get farther away. So now it looks like someone walked up this hill and then walked over the other hill. That's the whole point. So we practice overlapping space and shrinking in the distance. Those are two great skills. Now what happens here is up to you. Could be daytime, nighttime, snowing, could be uh, all kinds of different things. You could have a family of birds, you could put some snowmen, maybe you've got a, a fence that runs through here or a tiny house that's even farther away. You could keep going with the background and add a, a mountain range. Uh, you could make a full moon and some stars. You could do all kinds of things. Uh, but whatever you do, I hope you have fun. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and leave up the steps in case you want to try again or try at home. And I hope you enjoyed this week's activity. See you next Monday.